Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will present Carbapenem Resistance Enterobacteriaceae, the IDSA guidelines. So, Enterobacteriaceae, that is Carbapenem Resistance, is a cause of thousands of deaths annually worldwide. It is defined by CDC as Enterobacteriaceae, that is resistant to at least war Carbapenem antibiotic or producing a Carbapenemous enzyme. CRE refers to organisms resistant to meropenem or imipenem or enterobacteriaceae producing carbapenemous enzymes. CRE is characterized into carbapenemous producing and non carbapenemous producing groups. Now, what is this non carbapenemous producing? It is a result from amplification of non carbapenemous beta lactam genes with concurrent disruption of the outer membrane protein. So, this results in a resistance to carbapenemins. Prevalence is very high that is 35 to 60% of CRE cases in US are carbapenemins producing based on the CDC definition and the common carbapenemises are the KPCs that is Klebschella pneumoniae carbapenemis, New Delhi beta-lactamase that is NDMs, Verona integron encoded metallobetalactamase that is VIMS, imipenem hydrolyzing metallobetalactamase that is IMPS, oxaslinase that is oxa 48 like carbapenemases. Now importance of isolating this in treatment is important because considering carbapenem is our important go to antibiotic for sepsis and broad spectrum, resistant to this organism is going to change our empecivic therapy in case of isolation of these organisms. Now the diagnostic test that can be done to find carbapenemis resistance is phenotypic testing which is the inactivation method of differentiating between carbapenemis and the non carbapenemis producing CRE. Molecular testing can also help us in this. Now there is a strong recommendation that all clinical labs to perform carbapenemis phenotyping or genotyping to inform optimal treatment decisions. So, the guidelines. What is the preferred treatment approach for infections caused by enterobacteria isolated with carbapenemis to meropenem and imipenem susceptible while it is resistant to ertapenem? In those cases, what should we do? In that case, you can go for extended infusion of meropenem and imipenem. And the standard infusion dose can also be used and is may be considered reasonable if the patient has uncomplicated cystitis. Now consider severity and infection site for isolate susceptible to meropenem but not impenem. The treatment decision should consider the severity of the patient's illness and infection site. For instance, meropenem would be suitable for a urinary tract infection but not so for a complex intra-abdominal infection. Avoid using meropenem, babrobactam, imipenem, silastatin, relibactam and for ertapenem resistance but meropenem and imipenem susceptible infection as they are likely do not offer significant benefit beyond the extended infusion of the meropenem and imipenem. Next is what is the preferred antibiotic for treatment of uncomplicated cystitis due to CRE. In these cases we can go for nitrofurantoin, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin. We can also go for alternatives like aminoglycosides, oral phosphomycin, colistin, septazidomavibactam, meropenem, vaporobactam, imipenem, silastatin, relibactam, and cefiderocol. Now, the rationale to, for preferring these options is these options are effective in CRE cystitis and aminoglycosides, a single dose, is usually effective against cystitis. Next is the preferred antibiotic for treatment of pyelonephritis and complicated UTI. Now in these cases, you can go for trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole if the bacteria, bacteria is susceptible or ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin or you can go for septazidim avibactam, meropenem vabrobactam, imipenem silastatin relibactam, cefidurocol. Even aminoglycosides can be considered in this group of infections. Next is the preferred treatment for infection outside of UTI by CRE. 
where the results are not available or negative. So in that cases, special consideration should be done for patients' recent medical care in areas with high prevalence of metrolobitalactamase producing organisms. Previously identified with such organisms, preferred treatment will be septazinum ivibactam with azetronam or cefidiracol as a monotherapy. Now, rational is 35% of in US CRE isolates are carry main carbapenemase gene that is BLA-KPC, BLA-NDM, like that. Ceftrazim ivibactam is effective against most KPCs and OXA-48. Meropenem vibrobactam and imipenem celestin is active against CRE producing KPCs but not OXA. Activity against metalobetalactamase producers. The preferred agents lack activity against beta-lobetalactamases. Thus, cefidiracol is, if you are using a single therapy, cefidiracol is an alternative. However, you can reserve it for more challenging infections. Tetracycline or erbacycline can be used as an alternative. It's effective for infections not involving the bloodstream or the UTI. Effectiveness is independent of carbapenemase presence or type. Advisory for Extended infusions with carbapenem is against. You do not use extended infusions of carbapenem in these type of infections. Increased mortality and nephrotoxicity risks can be present. So it is advised not to use extended carbapenems in case of CRE. Now what is the preferred antibiotic for treatment of infection outside UTI by CRE if KPC production is present? Now it is specific KPC. If KPC is specifically present, then meropenem vibrobactam. Septazidem avibactam is the second choice. Imipenem celestatin relibactam is the third choice. Now, meropenem vibrobactam and all the others are associated with better clinical outcomes compared to polymyxin based treatment. Now, there is limited clinical data where direct treatment have been compared. So, meropenem vibrobactam resistance is still there, but it is very low. Now, there is also limited data with imipenem celestatin and relibactam, but in vitro activity and clinical experience suggests that it is likely to be effective. Cefidiracol continues to be an alternative, but to be used only in case of very severe infections. TGCycline and erbacycline are alternatives where the infection is not in the bloodstream or urine. Next is the type of antibiotics for treatment of infection outside of UTI caused by CRE in NDM producing. In these cases, septazidem avibactam astronam is the preferred treatment. Cefidiracol monotherapy is second. Observational studies have shown 30 days mortality with septazidem avibactam astronam combination with other regimens, so showing clear clinical benefit of these combinations. Now, patients should be monitored for liver enzyme elevation when you are using this kind of combination. Now, in cases where septazidem, avibactam, and astronam is not a viable option, consider astronam with meropenem, vibrobactam, or imipenem, celestatin, relibactam. This combination therapy is effective as long as there is no oxa type carbapenem is present. Now, TG cycline and erbacycline are recommended alternatives for NDM producing infections, these alternatives are suitable for infection not involving UTI or bloodstream. The effectiveness of these alternatives is not dependent on the type of carbapenem present. Now next is the preferred antibiotic for treatment of infection outside the urinary tract where OXA48 is the producing organism. Here clearly uh, septazidem avibactam is the drug of choice. Cephidrocol comes second. Now, again, uh, the meropenem vibrobactam and imipenem celestatin relibactam do not have activity against OXA48 and they are not recommended in these infections. Cefidiracol is to be used in case of these infections but to be used as a reserve drug. The alternatives are TGCycline or erbacycline as they can have activity against OXA producing organisms as well. The next is the likelihood of emergence of resistance of these new agents to CRE. Now the resistance to septazidem avibactam arises by mutation in the BLA-KPC gene. 
while the meropenem bacteropactum and imipenem cellastatin really bactum the primarily resistance is coming from permeability and efflux which um, also is associated with the increase in the BLA KPC gene copy numbers. Now the resistance to cephidrocol has various mechanisms like iron transport systems, change in AMP C, beta laxamides, increase in NDM expression. Now estimated resistance is 10 to 20 percent for septazidum avibactum and 3 percent for meropenem vabrobactum. Now clinical implication is AST should be repeated for newer beta lactam in certain cases and alternative agents may be considered if resistance emerges. Now what is the role of tetracycline derivatives for the treatment of infection caused by CRE? Now tetracycline are not recommended for treatment of urinary tract or bloodstream infections because the concentration is not adequate. Now tetracycline derivatives are effective regardless of the type of carbapenemase making them extremely suitable for other type of for all types of CRE infections. Now they have a rapid tissue distribution and resulting in uh, now tetracycline derivatives are considered for intra-abdominal skin and soft tissue osteomyelitis respiratory infection when the optimal dosing is being given. And Antimicrobial recommendation for TG cycline is the most uh, published experience and high dose tetracycline may be helpful to reduce mortality. Remember the dose is 200 milligrams loading and 100 milligram BD. Uh, Erbacycline generally lower MICs against CRE compared to TG cycline, limited clinical trial and post marketing data. Minocycline can be used but uh, again very limited data and we are not yet sure of the susceptibility. Omadaxycline should not be used, not recommended. So what is the role of combination of antibiotic therapy in treatment of infection with CRE? So when you are giving combination antibiotics, how we should give? Regarding the role of polymyxin, we will do a separate video on that. We are skip polymyxins and cholesterols in the management of CRE over here. But as of the recommendations of IDSA goes, cholestin may not be preferred in CRE. So if you are giving a combination therapy, then what is the rationale? The rationale for giving a monotherapy is empirical combination therapy can ensure initial treatment and includes an active agent for patients with a risk of CRE. Now the concerns about combination therapy is prolonged use of the second agent can result in an increased antibiotic associated adverse effects. And there are lack of comparative data between uh, the combination versus monotherapy. Now observational studies have shown a similar 30 day mortality with septazidum abibactum alone compared to septazidum abibactum with a second agent for KPC producing infections. Now expert panel advises against combination usage of CRE and only the preferred beta lactam to be used in a monotherapy because the second is not really shown till now to be of any benefit other than adding to the complications. Thank you for your patience. We will continue with this particular series with other set of organisms. Thank you.